This is how to create a calendar in Tableau that looks, feels, and interacts like a real calendar with arrows to switch between months. And we'll make it so that every day shows even if the dates are missing within your data set. I'm gonna use it to display the workouts color-coded by type so you can quickly spot patterns. And I created this background in Canva, so I added some binder hooks, but it works just as well with a plain background. I'll start by building the calendar structure on a new worksheet. And I was honestly shocked at how easy it is to build a calendar within Tableau. I'll start by moving the date field into the columns. Then I'll right click so I can make this a month. I'll add the date field again into the columns and then right click, go to more and choose weekday. Within the rows, I'll type the week of the date field. And you can see this gives us months across and the weeks down. I'm also gonna pull date into the filters so I can filter for just one month within the data set. Then to get numbers for the days within the marks, I'll type the index function. And I'll make this text. Then I'll right click, go to compute using, and choose table across, then down. But you can see there's missing dates within our data set, so they're not showing within the table. The trick around this is to right click on the week of date field, then turn on show missing values. And now we've got every date in the month showing, even if it's not in the data set. And this is because the index function fills in the layout based on position, not the actual data values. So even the missing dates still have a spot on the calendar. Next, I'll quickly format so this looks like an actual calendar. I'll start by removing the week header and hiding the date field label. Then I'll format the weekday headers so that the date format is an abbreviation. And I want to center these horizontally. Then for the shading, I'm going to remove the row banding. For the borders, I'm going to move the level to the right so it's a more detailed level. And this will give us that proper grid structure. But for the column divider, I don't need the header border. And once I drag this down, you can see it looks more like a calendar. Using text within the marks, I'm going to align these so that they're horizontally on the left and vertically on the top. To keep the missing dates while still adding detail, I have a quick workaround, but first let me show you why it's needed. If I try adding more detail like the workout ID, I have to uncheck show missing values and remove the index function, just to see the number of workouts per day. But I want to be able to see all the dates and the details in a way that makes sense. So instead I'm going to go back to what we originally had, with just the calendar structure. Then I'll right click on this worksheet to duplicate it. And we're going to overlay this new worksheet, which is going to be the calendar content. And here's where I'll add some detail. So I'll start by pulling the workout ID into the marks. Then I'll right click on our week date so I can uncheck show missing values. And I'll remove the index function from the marks. Then I'll bring the workout type in to determine the color of each square. And you can use the mark type to customize this. So you could change it to a circle or you could change it to a shape and make the workout type determine the shape. But for this, I'm going to make the workout type a color and change the mark type to a pie. That way, if we have more than one workout type within a day, we can see the split within the circle instead of having multiple circles. So when I edit the filter and change this to a different month like April, you can see we have one day where there's two workouts and we have another day where there's three workouts. I'll do some quick formatting on this so that we can overlay it. I'll start by hiding the headers. Then I'll format the worksheet, and for the shading, I'll choose None. Under Borders, I'm going to remove the row and column dividers. And now I'm ready to go to the dashboard and add our calendar structure and calendar content worksheets. I'll start by hiding the titles of both of the worksheets. Then I'll make sure both of these are set to fill the entire view. I'll move the structure of the calendar to be within our calendar container. And since my calendar container is in a completely white background, I'm going to format the worksheet to remove the shading. And because this is technically a table, we can format it just like one. We can adjust the font size, type, and color for the months and weekdays. And I won't show all these small formatting changes, I'm just going to fast forward to the next step. To add the details to the calendar, I just need to drag this over the calendar. And I'll resize it so that the pies sit in their date boxes. And since our radial chart already acts as a legend, I'm going to remove the default legend that comes with the calendar. We changed our calendar content so that it was for April, but our calendar structure is still for March. So I'm going to go in and change this to April. But instead of using a filter like this for the months, we can do something more intuitive. So I'm going to add left and right arrow buttons that lets users switch between months in the calendar. 
I'll create a new worksheet to design these calendar buttons. And I want users to have two options, the previous month and the next month. So I'm going to create a parameter to store these options. I'll call this calendar parameter and set the data type to date. Then I'll change the current value to something that's actually in our data set. We need to figure out which dates are from the month before or after the one we selected in our parameter. So I'm going to create a calculated field to check the date and label them as previous or next so we can use it in navigation. So this first line I'm typing checks if the month from the parameter matches the month after subtracting one month from the date field. Then it labels it as previous. For the second condition, I'll copy the first part because it's going to have the same structure. I'll paste it, and all I need to change is the negative one to a positive one. That way it's checking if the parameter matches the month after adding a month to the date field. Then I'll change previous to next. And I have all these calculated fields in my description if you want to just copy and paste. To build the structure, I'll start by moving this field into the columns. And I don't want to include null, so I'm going to filter out the null. That way we're left with just the next and the previous. I'll also add this field to the marks and change the mark type to a shape. That way I can have this field, which has previous and next values, determine the shape. And I can go through and assign the next value a right-facing arrow and the previous value a left-facing arrow. And it's more intuitive to have the previous and next switch, so I'm just going to sort it in the descending order. So now we have our previous and our next buttons. For some quick formatting, I'm going to hide the header, and then I'll format the worksheet so I can remove the shading. To get rid of those lines, I'll go to borders and remove the row divider. To make the action run on these buttons, I also need to create a calculated field. And this one is used to change the month based on which button the user clicks. So this first line I'm typing is like if the user clicks the previous button, it subtracts a month from the current calendar selection. And this next condition I'm typing says if they click next, it adds a month to the current selection. The result of this field is a new date value that takes into account whether the user clicked previous or next. And that gets fed back into the calendar parameter so the calendar updates to the new month. So I'm just going to bring this field into the marks so that it's in the view, and then I'll make this a day. Now going back to the dashboard, I'll add our calendar buttons worksheet. I'll hide the title of the worksheet and then set it to the entire view. And I'll resize it above my calendar, but in line with my month. To make this interactive, I'll go to the Dashboard tab at the top and hit Actions. I'll add an action and choose a parameter action. And I'll start off by unchecking all of the source sheets that is in our calendar button worksheet because we want the arrows in that worksheet to drive the action. And when the action is run, I want it to change the calendar parameter using the day of the action calculated field we created. Now when I click the right arrow that represents the next month, you can see the month in the tooltip changed. But to get the calendar to update based on these buttons, we need to go back to the calendar worksheet. I'll start by removing our current date filter. And the last calculated field we'll need will tell our calendars which period is selected. And this is super simple, it's just the month of the calendar parameter equal to the month of the date field. And I only have one year within my data set, but if you had more, you could add the year of the calendar parameter equal to the year of the date field. Then I'll drag this into the filters instead of our date field, and I'll select true. I'm going to right click on the filter to apply this to our calendar content worksheet as well. Then I'll go to that worksheet and remove our previous date filter. And now our calendar worksheets are linked to our arrow buttons, allowing us to go forward and back in time. I'll remove these extra things that we don't need, but you can see when I hover over one of the arrows, there's information in there we don't need as well. So I'm going to go back to the worksheet and edit the tooltip to remove everything that's in there. And while I'm in here, I'm also going to increase the size of these arrows. This calendar lets users view their data in a familiar month-to-month -month layout. With the ability to switch between months, see every date, even if it's missing in your data, and easily spot patterns through color and layout. 